Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Without a doubt, Fujifilm is kind of the king of film simulations. When I had my X100F, I enjoyed shooting classic Chrome, Eterna, Astia, and I know there's a lot of other well-loved film simulations like Nostalgic Neg, Classic Neg, and a bunch of others. And some people upgrade their camera bodies just to get the newest film simulations released by Fuji. And while film simulations and picture profiles are certainly most popular on Fuji, almost all of the camera manufacturing brands have their own offerings built into their cameras. And this week I decided to try out one on my Ricoh GR3, and that is the positive film effect. The GR3 comes preloaded with, I think, 11 film simulations, but among the Ricoh community, it seems like the only color profile really to take off is the positive film. I've shot with this simulation before, but this week I decided I was going to dedicate the whole week to shooting positive film JPEGs and show you the results. That way you can figure out if the hype is real. All of the images that I'm about to show you are straight out of camera JPEGs. I have not edited them in any way except a few exposure tweaks. And if you want to see them in higher resolution, check out the written review on my website. There's a link in the description and you can see them in more detail. So if you hear the yappy dog barking in the background, that's the neighbor's Pomeranian and there's nothing that I can do about it. I often want to do violence to it, but I can't. And all I can do is give you the advice of buy a cat instead. All right, let's take a look at these. So on uh, last Sunday afternoon, I was blessed with a really nice sunset and it was combined with a high tide and strong winds that threw a bunch of boats up onto the beach near where I live. Uh, this is right outside the city. So you can see there, uh, again, none of these photos are edited. This is a, a soccer team, or rather a football team, as they would say here, uh, that was doing some exercises on the beach, and it was so wet they just decided to take their shoes off and, and run barefoot. But as the sun went down, there was a little bit more of the, uh, the reds and the purples coming out, and the clouds were just, just so to make it a really nice sunset. So I think those turned out pretty well, uh, even without any kind of editing. The positive film colors are somewhat muted, in my opinion, except for the reds and the oranges, which have a really, really nice pop, and I love the way that uh, this film simulation renders them. You'll be able to see some of those muted colors here in the next, next couple shots. So there's the outdoor market here, and there's a lady selling flowers. And uh, here we have a picture of uh, a police motorcycle. I'd never seen one like that before, but it was... Uh, Kind of a, a standard blue color, but again, much more muted in, in these images. These coins, so this is Albanian currency, they use what's called the lek, L-E-K. And this gold coin here to, to the left is actually a very rich color, very bright color in reality. But the way that it's rendered is that it's much more muted. And then there was a boat that was washed ashore. The tide and the wind were super strong the other day and it tossed all these boats up on the shore and uh, made, made for some good photographs. And then here with the oranges, these colors uh, really stand out. And, and this is the, the highlighted oranges and reds here, as I mentioned previously. The second one here, there's a government building in the background and these trees are just full of oranges. And you can see that even against the, the gray sky and the white background, there's these really nice pop to that orange color. I like that a lot. And that's something you'll hear a lot from people who, who enjoy this film simulation. Well, it was Thanksgiving Day the other day, so I decided that I would document uh, our production of deviled eggs and see how they turned out under indoor lighting. The lighting in this room is not very good at all. Uh, so you see, uh, these eggs prove to be surprisingly difficult to shell uh, properly. There's some some uh, some victims that didn't turn out there as you <laughs> you may have seen but i i do really enjoy the colors the brown tones are nice to me on the eggshells and uh, then our dinner table here the little place setting it's got that orange color in there looks looks really nice unfortunately the weather this week has been like really crappy <laughs> it's been it's been raining all week it's been wet it's been cloudy the lighting hasn't been very good and so I struggled to capture a lot of the details that I wanted in the darker areas, in the shadows of the scenes that I was shooting. And that proved to be pretty difficult for me because I, I enjoy shooting and retaining details in the shadows. There's a lot of contrast in this simulation. And so I'll show you some of the results that I got. The first couple aren't bad. Again, under low lighting and, and in the, the rain, Got a cup of coffee there. They serve very small coffees, macchiatos, very European style, not like the American coffee that we have. 
back in the States. This plant, the uh, I walked by it initially and then I, I came back for it because I love the way that the the water was sitting on these petals. This next photograph, this is a good example of what I was saying about retaining details in the shadows. So you see the red on the Toyota truck, that looks great, right? And the highlights are looking really good there. But the man who is selling fish over in the shadows, you can barely make out what he's doing or what he's selling. And they, obviously there's those two men that are having a discussion right on the edge of the shadows and you can make out just very little. Now, if you're, if you're willing to adjust these in post, you could bring the shadows up and you can retain some detail even in the JPEG images. But I was just shooting straight out of camera. That's the way I wanted to keep the photos to give an accurate representation of the simulation. And even shooting with like a multi-segmented mode, uh, this is not highlight metered mode. Still, not much you're gonna, you're gonna be able to see from the shadows without post-processing. So here's a high contrast scene. This individual over to the far left, he's actually a book salesman. He has his books laid out along the street uh, to the right out of frame. So November 28th is Albanian Independence Day and all the school children dress up and they go down to this monument downtown. This is the Independence Monument and all their patriotic gear. The Albanian flag is a bright field of red and then a double-headed eagle right in the middle. So that's perfect for this film simulation. And you can see just how against all the, the darker tones, the red is just, just coming out and popping and, and it looks really good. One thing I never get tired of shooting in Albania is the outdoor markets where they sell produce and nuts and all kinds of things, almost anything that you can imagine. So I took my camera down there and before I got rained on, I was able to capture a couple shots. This one here, obviously produce. You can see the carrots there in the background. Here we have a guy who was selling walnuts and he looks like he has some garlic there and some beans. And you can see that what is on the table is exposed really nicely, which for this scene works great. But then in the doorways behind him, in, his fa in the face of the people, and then underneath the table, there's, there's not much there. So if you'd like to expose for the highlights when you shoot, I think this film simulation will work for you basically year round. For me, it's a little bit more challenging. Skin tones here are kind of a hit or miss. I found that in low light, in artificial lighting, I dislike the way the, the positive film rendered the skin tones. I found them to be a little orange, a little oversaturated. That said, when you get into more natural light, they tend to look better. Two examples here. This is my wife doing her favorite thing in the world, which is drinking coffee. And this was under a cloudy sky and some artificial lighting. You can see that her skin is definitely a little deeper saturated than it probably should be, and definitely a little on the orange side. In reality, it's probably something more like the color of my coffee, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I wasn't super pleased with that. Now, in the next photo, though, there's this big, bright window that's letting a lot of natural light in, and her skin tones look much better in this one, although still a little bit on, on the orange side. And then we had finally had one sunny day, the last day that I was shooting, that would have been yesterday. The sun is going down pretty early, so we don't have a ton of light. There's a lot of long shadows here still, uh, but I was able to capture a few things that I like. We're definitely into autumn, the later part of autumn. So the, the trees are turning. Captured this young man. He was on his cell phone, has some nice shadow back against that, that wall. Cats, as you n will know if you've watched my other videos, cats are pretty much my favorite thing to photograph and they're all over the place and they're just very photogenic. Captured this one here and this one, he, he just looked mean. I don't know, he, was, he wasn't my friend, I don't think. Along the beach here, there's a, a community of houses, probably a poorer community, and they often hang their laundry out on the trees. Some seashells that had washed up from the high tide, and the tide had, had gone out, so these were left on the beach. A couple boats there. Again, muted tones, mostly in, in the blues and in the greens in the background. Uh, nothing particularly jumping out at you here in this picture, but it is, I think, still a pleasant image. Then I found Barney. You know, the purple, I, I really like the way that this rendered the purple. There's not a lot of purple in my other shots, but we found Barney here. He's, he's in the woods, and I see that he must have had to become more, uh, more carnivorous having, having his home in the woods because he's clearly developed some teeth that he didn't have in the TV show. And then our final photo is some fungi or some mushrooms. There's a bunch of mushrooms that grow in this pine forest near my house. I, I like to walk there and that's where I've shot some of my other videos. So I guess in conclusion, I would say that I really enjoyed the last week of shooting with uh, the Rico and with the positive film effect, 
But for me personally, I don't think it's a film simulation that I'm going to pull out again until the summer when the sun is high and the light is brighter and lasts longer in the day. If I still lived in Guam where it was perpetually summer and sunny all the time, I would probably use this year round. I really like the flexibility that raw files give me to pull back some of the details in the shadows. That's especially important because I live in like a multi, or I live in a city with multi-story buildings. And so even when it is sunny outside, the, the buildings cut off a lot of that light. And for me, I need the shadows in my pictures and in my compositions. Obviously that's subjective and depends on your shooting style. So that may not be a problem for you. One thing I may do is assign this film simulation to one of my custom profiles. That way, if I see a scene that fits it really well, I can quickly change and take the shot with positive film. Otherwise, I can shoot raw. So like all film simulations, it has its place, its weaknesses, and its strengths. And I've enjoyed getting to try it out this week. Thanks everybody for watching. Again, if you want to read the written review and see the images in more detail and some of my other photographs and reviews, you can check them out on my website. There's a link down in the description below. And hopefully I'll see you again next week.